Mr. Rankin, Raskin rather. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome, Director Ray. Thank you for your service. And thanks also for reminding us that if we see something, we should say something. And uh, uh, I see Donald Trump telling his followers that he is about to be reinstated as president of the United States in August. So I wanted to make sure I said something so uh, the FBI can be on top of that situation, given that he's incited violence against the government before. But I wonder if you can um, help us understand what the FBI did on June 1st, 2020, versus what it did on January 6th, 2021. Um, on June 1st, 2020, we saw a full-blown government assault on hundreds of Americans who had peacefully assembled in Lafayette Square in the nation's capital to speak and petition government for redress of grievances relating to the murder of George Floyd. And then America watched as federal law enforcement in riot gear and on horseback cleared peaceful protesters and reporters uh, firing pepper balls and flash grenades into the crowd. It's been reported that around 2 p.m. on that day, top law enforcement and military officials assembled at the FBI command center, your command center, for a planning meeting in advance of this assault on the civil rights protesters. And so I want to ask you, who was the senior most FBI official present handling the Bureau's actions on that day? Was that you? If not you, who was it? And what was the FBI's general role and function in the events of June 1st? Well, um, there were a lot of people going in and out of the command post over the course of that day, so I'm not sure I can speak exactly to who was doing what at 2 o'clock uh, that afternoon uh, about well, a year ago. Who was the ranking person but involved? At, well, but it's important to be clear about what we're talking about here. You asked about the FBI's role. So the FBI does not, did not on, on June 1st of 2020 or on January 6th. We don't have the skills, the job responsibility, the training, the equipment, or the responsibility to engage in crowd control, riot control, uh, things of that sort. So we were not engaged in that kind of activity on June 1st or on January 6th. We do have a command post at the Washington field office. Uh, and at some point on uh, the day that you're referring to, at some point at different points of the day, especially in the evening and at nighttime, uh, I was over there. Um, I was not in Lafayette Square. I was in the uh, Washington Field Office Command Post for a good part of that night. At different parts of the day, other senior executives at the FBI were coming and going. But the, the activity that you're describing is not the FBI's. Uh, you asked about the FBI's role. That was not the FBI's role. What was the FBI's role? So we had a, a few different things. Uh, one was to provide the, we, I think our folks do a very good job of running command posts that bring different agencies together so that they can all sit shoulder to shoulder and exchange information, let each other know what they're doing, et cetera. So that's one thing we did. Second, uh, we are an intelligence agency. So to the extent that we have intelligence to collect, to analyze, and to disseminate, we do that. Third, we have tactical response. So if there is a, an incident that occurs uh, where there's a crime being committed, we in certain instances have the ability to send you know, a SWAT team to respond, uh, and we sometimes do that. And then last but not least, we investigate um, criminal activity. We are, after all, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, not the Federal Bureau of Security, not the Federal Police, of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, uh, and so we do that. And so our folks would have been in a variety of ways providing support to our partners uh, using the skill sets that, that we have, uh, which are extensive but not the same as a lot of our federal partners. Okay, so I wonder if you would just translate those four functions that you played um, on June 1st, 2020 to January 6th. Um, did you activate the command post on January 6th? Uh, we, were you operating as an intelligence agency? Was there tactical response? And were you doing investigation on that day? So as a general matter, all four of those same things uh, applied on January 6th as well. We had the command post just like we did back in June. We had the command post stood up at the Washington field office. Uh, we also had, just like we did back in June, a, a national command post stood up at our SIOC at headquarters. Uh, we were collecting, analyzing, and sharing intelligence when we had it. We had SWAT teams at the ready to deploy, and as we all know now, 
uh, at the appropriate time or at some point in time over the course of the afternoon, uh, we were asked to send our SWAT team and we did. Um, and, and, were you and we did investigative on, activity. And were you present yourself on January 6th? I was present in one of the command posts in the national, um, the national uh, command post at headquarters. Um, so yeah, I was in one of the command posts, yes. Gentlemen's time has expired. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there. And the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is push to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been, you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, and I'm, I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated, he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate, they are to go out, they have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking, they have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, 
my former office, you know, the Department of Justice. I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they wanna prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.